Hey, what's going on guys? This is John. Today is Monday, January 13th, 2020. I'm filming this video from my home here in New Jersey and I'm so excited because today is the day that I'm going to declare what my goals for 2020 are. If you're tuning into my station for the first time, I did this same exercise almost a year ago, January 18th or January 19th, 2019. I introduced a new YouTube channel and my very first video was explaining how I was going to go on a journey in my life to reach my full potential and really try to transform as many areas of my life as I can over the next few years. I spent about 40 minutes declaring what my goals were. I, have them, I had them printed out on paper and I spent a number of hours thinking about what I wanted to do for the year. And then during 2019, using around 60 videos, I started to chronicle my journey, my experience, my lessons learned, started to explain things I'm reading in books, and I found that process very therapeutic, as weird as it sounds. But when I look back, I'm so proud of what I accomplished. Just to name a few examples, I was able to lose 10 pounds. I've completely transformed my body. My body fat percentage dropped from around 18% to 8.5%. My cholesterol dropped from 231 to 181. In terms of my finances and my job, I was able to acquire almost half a million dollars last year. Um, and are we able to bring a newborn into the world and my family's doing well. I was able to elevate a number of areas of my life, but things didn't always go as planned either. There were areas of my life where I wish I would have done a little bit more. Maybe I wanted to go on a few more romantic dates with my wife. I wanted to do a little bit more charitable work. I wanted to get more public service in. But I have to say, spending a lot of effort thinking about what I want to do with my life for the year, documenting it, printing it out, spending time in the morning and at night looking at my goals, figuring out what my to-do list for the day is, for the week, for the month, reading books has been extremely rewarding and I've learned that it's more exciting seeing the kind of person you become chasing a goal than actually acquiring the goal itself. So for today, what I'm going to do is just like I did a year ago, I'm going to spend probably around 35 to 40 minutes and go through the goals that I came up with for, 29th, uh, for 2020. What I do is I read out the goals, pretty mundane, yes, but then I can check in on myself a few months from now, a year from now, and really see how I did compared to where I wanted to be. And um, hopefully you'll find this information, you'll find this approach pretty interesting because I'm here to tell you after 12 months of really taking this seriously, it works. It's amazing and it's actually something I look forward to on a daily basis. So let's get started. Um, as I said, I wrote down my goals, I print them out, I put them in a folder and every morning I spend about 15 minutes reviewing my goals just to keep myself in check. Maybe I don't do it seven days a week, but at least three to four days a week I'm looking at my goals. And it's kind of funny, you know, um, I work for a large company and it's so common every year we spend time and energy documenting the goals we want to do for the year on our jobs. How often do we do that? in our own personal life. I don't think many of us do. And if we do write goals, we don't do it in such a structured way. We don't really feel the pressure or the accountability to do it. But this approach um, really is a good approach I'm finding. And if you're interested, about a week and a half ago, I put a video out there explaining the right way to set goals in life. And this is based on just my experiences. So you can check that out and see if that would help. Okay, so 2020 goals for John William. To ensure I continue to improve all areas of my life and keep momentum going from the vast accomplishments in 2019, I will keep this quote unquote seven pillars approach to which I group my goals for 2020 in. Doing this will help ensure I remain focused on all facets of my life and well-being and can dramatically improve my life year over year. So the seven pillars are business and career, health and fitness personal development and spirituality, relationships, travel and lifestyle, finances, and public service and charity. So these are the top level categories where I find I want to spend the effort, what I find most important in my life. And then below each category is where I set my goals. So first we're going to start with business and career. 
As I said, um, this first goal talks about my primary job. I'm an employee with a large $15 billion life sciences and technology companies that is headquartered in Germany. The company has around 50 some odd thousand employees. I work for their corporate function in information technology and I am a program lead that oversees large multi-million software development projects that helps automate processes in the company, helps them run more efficient. But I do my job out of my home in New Jersey and I, and I travel quite extensively around the world, um, mostly in Europe, but in the past I've been to India, Indonesia, um, it's, uh, yeah, Japan, the list goes on and on. I think in my life over the last 20 years I've traveled to well over 30 countries um, and had an amazing experience doing that. So this talks about my primary job. By the end of 2020, my goal is to work hard and strive to realize a above average yearly performance rating with a goal of getting a double A grade. Our company grades employees' performance by D, which means you suck, you're on your way out, C, not much better, B, okay, not bad, A, you met your goals, double A, you exceeded, and triple A, you're walking on water. Last year, I managed to get a triple A, um, which is why my compensation was so high. Um, this year, I'm really hoping for a double A. We'll see. I had a great year. I worked really hard, but we went through a large reorganization. People got moved around. I'm in, uh, there's new management in place, so you never know how that goes, but um, hopefully my best foot, is, best foot being forward every day, day in and day out, is being recognized, and I'll get compensated for that accordingly. But leading up to the day that I get my bonus award, I will do like I always do when I'm trying to achieve something, and I will continue to meditate and live a life of expectancy like I will already have received a double A rating and already receive a high paying stock award. So my compensation is I get a base salary, I get a cash bonus, my bonus target is 30% of my base salary. I also get a stock award because I've been there for four years now and it takes three years for stock awards to vest and because I've received stock awards from the first year I joined, now things are starting to pay dividends. And on top of that, every April the company pays out a profit sharing, of, which is 3% of your base salary. And once I hit five years, which will be November 2020, I'll invest 100% in that profit sharing. Right now I'm invested 80%, so all that stuff really adds up. My goal this year is to see myself get a bonus and and combined stock award of at least $140,000. To me, that'll be like the, an, amazing, uh, an amazing feat. If I get 127 to 130,000, I could live with that and I'll be very happy. Anything less than 127, as weird as it may sound to some, I'll lose sleep over it because I feel I deserve more. But if I minimum got the double A, that's really what I'm looking for. If the stock award isn't as big as I wanted, I can't control that because it's really driven by the stock market, the company's um, earnings, the company's stock price and all factors I can't directly control. But at least if I get a double A rating, I'll feel, I'll feel proud, I'll feel great. And anything on top of that would be butter uh, or icing on the cake. Ideally, getting that 137 or 140 mark would just be phenomenal. So we'll see but I get paid out that in, uh, in February or March. Um, by September 2nd, 2020, I will heavily network, research, and continue to evaluate my current position and my future at my current employer for the next 12 months. My, my five-year anniversary is November 2nd, 2020, so achieving that will be a great accomplishment. Um, and uh, because at that point, I'll be 100% vested in my profit-sharing retirement account. Um, why am I talking about this goal? You know, I live in New Jersey, as I said, my company's headquartered in Germany, and I've been around long enough to know what my upward mobility is. And my upwards mobility, while it may be a great potential, reality is the fact that I'm in New Jersey and I don't live close to where the action is, my ability to get a management position that I'm happy with is highly unlikely, unless I move. Moving is not in my cards. Um, the fact that I've survived as long as I have as comp highly compensated as I am and also living in New Jersey is because of the performance that I have. At the end of the day though, you really need to feel that not only you're being compensated properly, but you're growing. You're continuing to be challenged and you're getting to a level that you feel 
you deserve or you feel where you should be. And I'm starting to hit the point where I see the ceiling and seeing the ceiling really makes me upset. It doesn't keep me motivated. You wanna feel like your potential is as strong as the work you put in and the opportunities that present themselves. And I'm starting to feel like over the long term, it's probably unlikely to see um, really that materialize. So I really wanna look into my network. I wanna really look at my career and I really wanna see where am I going. And at minimum, staying until November seems like a smart move because I'll stay, um, get my five year anniversary. And there's also a lot of exciting projects going on this year. But after that, I have to see. So those are the two goals I have for my primary job. The next is what I classified as a side gig. By the end of December, for YouTube, I want to publish at least 125 new YouTube videos. As I said, right around now, I have around 60. Last year, my goal was around 95 or so. I fell a little short, but still, it was a great learning experience. I felt like I started becoming more comfortable in front of a camera, and that was really my goal. So 60 was okay. This year, I wanna do another 125, which is a number of videos a month. I would love to acquire a total of 500 subscribers. Right now, I think I just hit 100. Um, I'm really not in this to acquire a subscriber base because I'm really trying to establish a level of credibility. Who the hell knows who I am? What do they care about who I am? What am I doing? Um, it's really not my goal. My goal is to go on a journey, chronicle that journey, be successful, and then hopefully catch enough attention where people can see what I did to acquire the level of success I had. But now we're talking another year or two out still. But I'd love that snowball to get bigger and bigger. And this year, getting a total of 500 subscribers would be pretty cool. Uh, the last uh, of this specific goal is I want to spend at least five hours per week following some key people I'm subscribed to to learn how to be uh, better at blogging, digital marketing, and growing a subscriber base. Um, the next goal is by March 2020, I want to create and publish a new website and blog. So this goal is to make sure by March 2020, I research, invest in, and publish a new website for you know, my life. And I wanna start a new blog. I wanna publish content on that new blog at least twice a month. And on that blog, post experiences around things like my fitness journey, intermittent fasting, which is a new diet I've been doing for the last 10 months and I'm absolutely in love with. My working out, how did I go from 18% body fat down to eight and a half? How did I lose 10 pounds? How did I put on 100 pounds of muscle mass? Um, I've learned a tremendous amount. I think blogging would be really therapeutic. It would be fun. Um, and those are the, some examples of things that I'd like to publish on the blog, at least in the beginning. Um, the last goal I put was I'd love to see by the end of the year me to find creative ways to uh, bring in additional income. Not much. I'm starting small. $250 to $500 a month in additional income um, would be really cool. There's different ways I can go about doing that. Some of the things I'm going to look at are trying to do um, phone consultations to take my experience in my career and offer paid, con um, paid phone calls that I could offer help for a fairly cheap way. Um, those are still a few hundred dollars and there's some companies that offer that kind of capabilities. Um, there's some things online I'd like to try out, like affiliate marketing, um, things like that. So I really want to learn. So if I could acquire a couple hundred dollars extra in my pocket a month doing things on the side, that would be awesome. So that's the last goal for my business and career. The next major category is health and fitness. There is a total of 11 goals here. Health and fitness. The first is I will easily eat clean at least five days a week to establish optimal health, energy, vitality, and physical fitness. Um, before I go any further, let me quickly explain one thing. You may be hearing that statement and saying, oh, that sounds funny. Why, do you, why is he talking that way? Why is he saying I will easily eat uh, clean and establish optimal health, energy, vitality, etc.? I write these goals in a way that um, when I repeat these goals, when I read these goals, which I do at least four days a week, I read them in a way that my mind and my subconscious already sees the light of how I'm gonna acquire and achieve that goal. I don't wanna say, I hope I can, or I, I look forward to, or it would be great if that language is not anything that's meaningful when you're setting goals. You wanna be direct, you wanna be positive, and you wanna already see the vision of you achieving something. So I write things in pretty clear terms, but I also use specific language so that when I recite these each day, 
I'm really feeling motivated and my subconscious is really seeing um, my energy and how I feel about this. So when I say I will easily eat clean, I don't want to look at my diet as something struggle that I struggle with. I want to look at having a clean diet as something I look forward to, something that's easy, and I don't look at it as a chore. So just a, a quick few words about that. Next goal, I will easily run and or work out for at least one hour per day, at least four days a week, in order to maintain optimal health, energy, vitality, and physical fitness. I will run at least 10 miles a week, regardless if I go to the gym or not. Um, this is a big habit of mine now. I started this last year, and for the last 10 months or so, um, this has just become a normal routine. I get anxious and upset if I don't get to the gym or do a form of strength training or exercise. Uh, a day or two late, if I go that long, I really feel like I'm missing something and that's I think normal when you have a habit and it's great to have that kind of a habit. Um, so this goal will continue and something I take very seriously. By February 2020, I will research and try another diet form of intermittent fasting for at least a three month period. And this experience shall be documented through both my blog and my YouTube station. Intermittent fasting is a diet I started last year. I've been doing it for around 10 months and I believe it is a phenomenal diet. It's simple and the diet that I do is I eat during an eight hour window and I eat fairly healthy, um, but I don't eat or I fast for 16 hours. That's it. I'm not calorie counting. Maybe there's certain meals. I, I'm curious how many calories they are, but I'm not worrying about counting crap. I'm not logging into an app. It's not like the ketogenic diet, which I did try in the past, where you have to look at your macros and add up the food you're eating. And if you're out in a restaurant, what are you eating there? That lifestyle, honestly, is not sustainable over the long term. What's long term, what's sustainable over the long term is for you to do your own research, understand what it means to eat well, understand why it's important to eat minimally processed foods, and doing this on your own not worrying about Weight Watchers showing up to your door, not worrying about a South Beach diet or a low carb diet or a ketogenic diet. In my opinion, maybe many people will disagree with me. I think those are maybe a good starting point for people to explore how they can get healthy in life. But ultimately, you want to be able to eat healthy on your own. That way you're not relying on buying a subscription to something. You're not relying on finding an app. You're not relying on logging things on an app. It just becomes second nature and that's what's helped me. I worry about when's the last meal I had the night before. Today my last meal was at 6.30. Awesome. That means the next meal I eat is not until 10.30 tomorrow. And that's when I break my fast breakfast, break my fast. I break my fast 16 hours after my last meal the day before. That's all I concentrate on. But there are different types of intermittent fasting. I'm doing the 16-8. There's many different forms of intermittent fasting and I want to learn more about that and I want to give it a shot and see maybe just change things up in my body, get my body not so comfortable in its current form and maybe try something new. Um, but there's no, design, there's no denying the results. Um, my medical exam last year was amazing and it showed that all of my levels were in a normal range. I've never had, at least the, as many years as I can remember, I've never had normal cholesterol. I've always had high cholesterol. Doctors in the past tried putting me on medication. I've always had a decent level of uh, body fat. And, and now it's all normal. And I attribute it in part to my diet. And intermittent fasting is a huge part of that. Next goal, by December 2020, I will easily take at least four quote unquote in body 570 body composition scans. For 2020, I will easily realize an average of eight to 9% body fat. I want to have a perfect six pack. If I can get a somewhat visible eight pack, that'll be awesome. I want to have an average weight of 180 pounds and I want to have between 100 and 110 pounds of skeletal muscle mass. And as I'm looking to increase my skeletal muscle mass, which is around 97 pounds now, I want to increase the muscle mass in both my legs, which is the biggest area I need to improve on, by at least 15%. Very quick, I'm not going to go through details, but this is an in-body scan. You stand on a scale with bare feet, you hold on to two handles, electrical currents go through your body for about one minute and it spits out the status report and it measures with about 98% accuracy, extreme level of details about your body. Even things like what's your basal metabolic rate, 
your BMR, how many calories do you burn living a sedentary lifestyle? These are statistics you really need to know about yourself. Standing on a scale and looking at pounds isn't the right approach because you could increase your water weight or you could lose weight but put on muscle mass so it may not look like you're building, uh, you're losing weight but that's actually not a bad thing because you're putting on muscle and putting on muscle burns calories. So I did put a video, if you wanna do a search, you'll find that I did do a video while I was on a business trip in Germany where I dissected the components of this in-body results and uh, you can see what it's all about but I wanna continue getting these tests and my goal is to get at least four during the year so I can see how my progress is. But I'm really in a good spot right now in my life. I do wanna increase my skeletal muscle mass a little bit more as you saw. Um, but this is a good way to measure my uh, success and to hold myself accountable. Goal number five out of 11. By December 2020, I will easily get a routine dental exam and cleaning with, with no cavities and dental problems and I will ensure I continue to brush twice a day and floss at least three days per week. Um, kind of a funny sounding goal, I agree, but my teeth and gum health is extremely important. Um, I want to make sure that I upkeep the annual, root, um, the annual visits to the dentist I do. Um, flossing, I could always do a better job on. I definitely don't floss every day. Um, flossing three to four days a week is something I've been doing for a number of years now and I have excellent teeth, excellent gum health. Seems to be working out okay, so making sure I continue that up is uh, very important. Uh, next goal is I will easily get a, by the end of the year, easily get a routine health and wellness exam at my physician and upkeep the health results I experienced in 2019 regarding my blood work and the results of my urine samples. Um, this I normally do in Q4 of 2020, so October, November-ish, um, but as I said, my Results last year were amazing. I want to make sure I keep that up. And to keep that up, I need to continue eating right and exercising. Goal number seven, by April 2020, I will easily complete a 30-mile ultra Spartan race in Vernon, New Jersey. And I will document my training and the race on YouTube and my blog. Last year, I did a 10-mile Tough Rudder, a Tough Mudder race in um, New Jersey. I did put a cool video about that. You can check that out. And right after I finished that race, I really enjoyed it. I felt the sense of accomplishment. I, about a week or two later, paid for already and signed up for this Spartan race in April. Um, I knew, and it wasn't cheap. I think it was around 200 bucks. Uh, it, was, it was a discounted rate because it was such a early payment compared to when the race was. But I knew if I didn't pay, um, maybe I'd find excuses or I'd get lazy and I wanted to really um, challenge myself and go from a 10 mile Tough Mudder to a 30 mile Spartan race, which is in the mountains in Vernon, New Jersey, uh, which is where they do skiing in Mountain Creek, I think is the name of the ski resort. So I need to really start getting back into my uh, running habits. We had a baby in November, so a couple months ago, and I lost a bit of my regiment with running but I haven't lost my regiment with my physical activity. So I feel really good in terms of my body strength, but getting back to running is something really important. Um, I, uh, next goal is I will consider also doing another 10 mile Tough Mudder race by the end of the year if I can. I did do some reading in the news and found out that there's a couple big lawsuits against Tough Mudder. Um, people claiming that they owe, uh, they owe them money and if you combine all the lawsuits together it's almost like 900 grand. So they may go out of business or they may claim bankruptcy, I don't know. Um, but if they stick around, I hope so. I'd love to do another race uh, by the end of the year as well. Uh, number nine, I ha would like to complete by the end of the year a number of personal physical challenges and document them on YouTube, likely in the summertime. These are things like doing a U.S. Army uh, physical test, U.S. Marine physical test, the MRF routine, and uh, some other examples if I can find them. Uh, I feel like, again, I'm in really good shape and continuing to challenge myself is something I really like. And I'd like to do uh, some of these types of physical tests just to see how I do and if I could fare well. Um, so that's what this is all about. All right, two more. The next one is by the end of the year, I will ensure I get an average, a minimum of five hours of sleep each night to ensure optimal energy, health, and vitality. Now this one, most people will balk at. Five hours, people may look at and say that's not enough. At my age, and I'm 41 years old, maybe I should be getting seven or eight hours of sleep a night. Uh, I can't do that. I, I, 
I don't realistically um, sleep for that long. Five hours is what I normally get. I seem to be okay when I get that. We'll see what happens when I get older, but definitely anything less than five hours, I'm starting to drag in the morning and I hate that feeling. Uh, last one is I want to have a stretching goal. I feel it's extremely important as we get older to make sure that you're nimble, you, that your um, your muscles are stretched well, you're very agile, and I want to um, really focus a lot about this in, in addition to just my strength training and cardio. So I do have a goal this year that I want to be extremely limber. I want to be able to do a spread eagle split. Uh, I want to be able to put my nose down to the floor when I'm touching, when I'm you know sitting down and, and, I, and I'm stretching. Um, so I have some key goals here that I want to achieve, and maybe I'll show some before and after videos on my way to do that. There's a couple of books I've invested in, um, not expensive, but they give some tips on how to do this over a four to six week period. So we'll see. So that concludes the health and fitness goals. The next one is relationships. Now relationships here is extremely important to me. I, just to set some context, um, I'm married. I've been, I've been happily married for a number of years now. I have a six year old daughter. We just had a son a couple of months ago who's now two months old. My parents are both, thank God, still alive and, ha and happily married almost 50 years. I have an older sister and a younger brother, both of which have children. Um, I have some friends who I've been friends with for over 30 years. So I feel very blessed that I am able to say this and keeping up with those relationships as you get older, as you have families, as you grow in your careers is not easy. So I wanted to put some specific goals to make sure I really follow this carefully. And uh, these are the, the five goals I have. First is, I will easily plan a romantic, fun, or adventurous date night with my wife at least once per month. Second is, I will easily plan a um, easily plan daddy, daddy time with my daughter and my son at least once a month. Third, I will once a week socialize either face-to-face -face or virtually with my close friends. Fourth, I will three times a week at least socialize face-to-face -face or virtually um, with my close family. And last is, I will easily take off from work Saturday and Sunday, exceptions only, to allow myself time to rest, recover, have fun, and create balance in my life. What I've done is I created a kind of small table. I have the names of my wife and kids and the months going down here, and I'm just going to be taking some notes each month to see what I did just to spark some memories, so maybe even take some picture or short video so throughout the year I can publish how I'm doing against this goal and, and um, it'll be really fun, I think, to look back and see uh, certain events to trigger some memories. For example, at the end of last year, I sat on the couch with my family and we saw a number of the videos that I did on YouTube and some of those were really fun videos and um, things we really enjoyed doing to, uh, looking at together. Um, so this concludes the relationship goal. The next goal is also quite long. There are nine goals under the personal development and spirituality category. The first one is, by the end of the year, I will easily read at least 10 books to learn and develop myself. I want to read 10 books around the following categories three books on money and finances, three books on personal development, three books reading about successful people, and one book about health and fitness. This ratio may change, but these are the categories I felt were most important. Um, as of right now, I am reading one book and another one on deck. The first book is Richard is by Richard Branson. It's called Finding My Virginity. It talks about Richard Branson's life from the point at which he finished his first book, which was called um, Losing My Virginity. Um, so from about 1999 to present day is what this book is all about. Um, I just started it not too long ago. Uh, so it's this new autobiography he has. Um, so this is the book I'm reading. And on deck is this book here which is called Super Pumped, The Battle for Uber by Mike Isaac. This is about the company Uber and how it went from a idea to a company and all everything that happened after that. So this is what I'll read after this one. And uh, maybe throughout the year, I'll give some quick reviews on how I find the books and what other books I'm gonna buy and why. 
but uh, I found it very helpful to read last year. I read six books last year. In, in t prior to 2019, I maybe read a chapter of, of something. I, I never read or I never read and I found reading to be very helpful. It's um, always exciting and interesting to read about the habits of successful people because you start seeing some themes there. It's exciting to read about how other people overcame adversity in their life and challenges in their life. So really, I found it extremely helpful to focus on reading and this is um, my goal here. The next one is I will learn by the end of the year I will spend time and learn about Michael Singer's quote-unquote untether my soul program. Um, this untether my soul program I believe I heard from Tony Robbins on something I was listening to on YouTube. It sounded very interesting and I wanted to learn more about it so Maybe this isn't my top priority, but by the end of the year, maybe I'll spend some time doing so. So we'll see. Uh, but this is what that one's all about. Uh, the next one is, actually the next two are extremely pivotal for me and was a huge turnaround for me last year. And I really believe was a great habit that I acquired and I polished that helped me be as successful as I was. But it has to do with a morning, a morning ritual and an evening ritual. So the next goal is I will easily perform my morning ritual at least five days a week, ensuring I write in my journal, I read, I meditate, I perform positive affirmations, I do my breathing exercises, etc. If you're interested and you scan through my videos, you'll see that there's a number of videos I did where I talk about my morning routine. I found it amazing. My old morning routine was I would lay in bed, the alarm clock would go off, I would snooze it a few times, I'd finally pick up my cell phone, I'd start reading emails, I'd start scanning Facebook or looking on LinkedIn, um, I would start seeing some things going on in my job, maybe I'd watch something going on on CNN and it just killed my mindset, it just killed my perception of the day. I already started my day with a level of stress and I really wasn't productive and I was just like a guy walking around in a dark room. But now I wake up really early. I, I love having time in the morning just for myself. So I wake up around 4, 4.15. I you know, wash up, I brush my teeth, I shower, I read five or 10 pages in my book. I do do a level of meditation where I, I think about what I want in my life and I visualize the things that I want to acquire. I scan through my goals. Um, I speak out loud of, of positive aff affirmations, uh, you know, things I'm blessed for, uh, blessed about, things I'm happy about. I do do some writing in a journal, which I started last year, and I find this really helpful. Any new ideas I have, any quotes, I document all that here. But I start my day off with this way so that by the time I'm done, I'm in just such a great state of mind. I'm so driven. I'm so excited to start my day, and this has really been tremendous. Um, the next goal is on the flip side, when you end your day. So I, the next goal is I will easily perform my evening ritual at least five days a week, ensuring I write in my journal, I read, I have a healthy tea, like green tea, I think about what I'm grateful for in my life, I look at the goals I need or the to-do list I have for the following day, and, and so on. So not only do I start my day very meticulously, but I end my day meticulously as well, where I can you know, really summarize what I see that day, feeling accomplished, did I accomplish what I wanted, I look at my to-do list the next day, um, I, th I think about the top five or 10 things I'm grateful for, and I say this stuff out loud, um, I read in my, I write in my journal if I need to, I write, I read in a little bit more in my book, um, but these two, these two goals, which I really fine-tuned and polished last year, um, were amazing habits, and I highly recommend you read about morning rituals. There's a couple of books I read which you can look at some videos and see what they were, um, but they really give a little bit of information good and, and, and what, what are good ways to establish morning rituals and what's important there. Um, the next goal, goal number five, I will, connect and I will connect with God every day through prayer, gratitude, or conversation. And this includes prayers at dinner time, sitting with my daughter before bed, uh, and so on. So we're, um, we're a religious family. I was raised Roman Catholic. My wife is Roman Catholic. We're raising our children Roman Catholic. So having God in our household is very important and we try to make sure that we uh, practice something every day to keep, keep God first and uh, realize you know, all the good things that we're, we're having in our life. And this is something where we want our um, children to grow up with as well. 
Um, goal number six, my wife and I will actively support our daughter in her weekly religious school studies and learnings. She just started a um, started going to religious studies called CCD, which is children learning about God and Jesus and learning about key elements of the Bible. Um, so she started this this year and does that once a week for an hour and 15 minutes. So we're going to continue to be supportive with her on that. Seven goals. So there's three more goals, guys. Um, the next goal is by April 2020, Stephanie and I will successfully host a baptism event for our son Graham and do that with a church and a reception at a nice restaurant with some close family. So we're going to make um, a large investment here to make sure we have an amazing day, an amazing event, and we're so happy to uh, have the opportunity to do so. So we'd like to do that by April. Um, the next goal is I will attend church with my family at a formal mass at least once per month. Uh, we didn't do a good job with this one last year. We only went to mass a couple of times uh, during the year. And, you know, we know it's uh, sometimes hard or, you know, it could be looked at as an inconvenience, but we really need to make it work. And um, they offer mass on su Saturday evenings and going to mass and then doing a dinner after that seems like a fun tradition. So if we can do that once a month, uh, that'll be great. Last goal for personal development and spirituality. By March 2020, I will easily compile and produce a new video on YouTube for my son's club foot condition. And I will put a video explaining our experience and put that on my YouTube station and my blog with the hope of offering help to other families going through the same thing. Okay, so my son who was born in November was born with a rare birth defect called club feet. Instead of his feet growing straight and out like that, if the bottom of my hands or my palms are the soles of my feet, he was born like this. So his feet were pointed inward. Around 21 weeks when we had our ultrasound, we learned uh, that he may have this condition and nobody likes to hear birth defect. So we scattered the internet, we scattered YouTube. My wife found forums online and thank God we learned that this condition, while it is a bit of an inconvenience for the first year or so of the baby's life, it's treatable. It's not a lifelong condition. We've learned a tremendous amount doing this. Um, thank God my son so far is doing well. Um, but I've documented this along the way. I've been taking a lot of videos and, and, and taking a look at his progression. And my thinking was at the very end, so maybe by the end of uh, March, he would have gone through this for six months, which is when most of the changes happen. I want to put a video together. So if somebody then, new parents are going through the same thing, they'll be able to find our video and maybe I'll have an opportunity to help them. So that's what this one is about. And that concludes personal development and uh, the spirituality goal. Next goal is travel and lifestyle. There are four goals here. First, by December 2020, I will easily plan and take my family on a vacation somewhere nice and warm for at least four, preferably five nights. Next goal is by August two, uh, 2020, I will plan easily plan and take our family on our normal vacation, which is renting a summer home in Long Beach Island, New Jersey for seven days. We've been doing this for the last five or six years. Um, we rent a nice house in walking distance to the beach. I did put a video, which I think was uh, July of this year. I did do a nice video summarizing the experience and you'll see the nice house we rented and, and what a great area LBI is if you're not familiar with it. Um, we want to keep this tradition going and um, we want to be able to, we hopefully we'll, we'll find a rental in the next month or so so we can lock that in and have that ready to go. And I want to achieve that before the end of the summer. The next goal, which is also very exciting, is I will easily plan our annual NYC trip for Christmas. We want to stay at a nice hotel, and uh, during the year, I want to use the Acorns app and save at least $1,200 to support the expense of the trip. So this is something we've been doing as well for another four, of the last four or five years. We stay overnight in New York, we rent a nice hotel, we go to see a show at Radio City Music Hall, we go out to dinner, um, and during the year, I save money through the app called Acorns, which is, if you haven't heard of it, it's a really cool app. You could set it up where you, um, you can do really two things. You could save whatever amount of money you want. It could be five bucks, it could be 20 bucks every week, and it automatically deducts it from your checking account. And you can invest in mutual funds, believe it or not, with that small amount of money or you can connect the app to your credit card or your debit card. And every time you swipe it, it will round off to the nearest dollar. So if I, if I swipe the card for 
$1.75. It'll take that quarter, which rounds it up to the next dollar, and puts it into a holding account. When that holding account reaches $5, it invests it. So it's a nice way to save a little bit of money over a long period of time. And in this case, at the end of the year, I normally send, uh, save around 1000 to 1200 bucks. Um, all the while, I'm saving you know, what to me is pennies during the year, but it all adds up. And this is a, a, an app I've been using for some time and, and, and like a lot. The last uh, goal is by October, uh, October 2020, I will easily complete the desired renovations we have in our home. We want to do in our home. The home you see behind me is a home we bought in November of 2018. The first four months or so of buying the home, we did a lot of work. The bones of the home and the, the, the backyard, everything's amazing, but the taste, the design it wasn't ours. Um, it was built in 1995, so we did a lot of work. Uh, you see behind me, you see the, the nice floors, the um, appliances. We put in new countertops, a new sink, uh, a number of other things you don't see. Um, but we want to do quite a bit more this year, so we'll document that, and it's not going to be cheap. I think between all the room, all the work we want to do on our house, and as well, we're putting in a home generator that kicks on whenever the power goes out. It can power the entire home, and it runs off of natural gas. Um, uh, it's around nine grand just for that. So this expense in total is probably going to be, if you count the generator, anywhere between twenty-three and twenty-seven thousand dollars. So God willing, with the bonus I hope to get, this will um, be achievable. Last two categories: we have finances and then public service and charity. So finances, a um, couple goals here. The first goal is by the end of the year, I will save at least an additional seventy-five thousand um, dollars cash. And this savings will come in a number of from a number of different sources. It'll come by saving money in a personal savings account. I have a Synchrony savings account, which is an online account which has a API, APY of around 1.8, 1.9%, which is really good. But they have a, such a high rate um, because they're not a brick and mortar bank. It's just an online high yield savings account. But um, it'll be from that, and that it gets funded through my payroll. My cash bonus, whatever I get for my stock awards, and whatever interest I gain throughout the year, and interest is paid out monthly. Um, next is I will continue to save with my daughter. We opened up a cash value life insurance policy in January of 2016, and we save around $350 a month. Um, I'll continue to do that, and I count that as savings as well. So it's what is that like $4,000 a year? I will also create a saving a new savings engine for my son by March 2020. I invest in a 401k every paycheck. My 401k is actually great at my job. I save 6% of my paycheck. My company matches dollar for dollar up to 6%. So each paycheck I put of my own money like $1,100 every month. I'm sorry, every uh, paycheck I get paid twice a month and my company matches that. So I'm definitely reaching the IRS limit, which this year I think is 19,500. Um, so when I reach that limit, I'm, I'm actually like um, collecting almost $40,000 because my company's matching dollar for dollar. So uh, that's great. And the other thing my company invests in is a yearly profit sharing. Um, I'll expect to have good growth, hopefully, in my 401k. Last year, I hit, I think, 27%. The market was amazing last year. My, my 401k grew tremendously, um, and I also get dividends. So last year, I, I think, um, as I said, last year, I had uh, around 27% growth. I acquired around $16,000 just in dividends alone. Um, and last time I checked, I think my 401k was around, not counting today's market, which did really well, uh, around $523,000. Um, so it's quite high. Uh, my savings accounts, as, um, as of January 12th, um, my Synchrony savings account had around $56,500. My checking account, I'm sorry, my savings account and in, in what I you know, use for my day-to-day -day spending is really small, around 3100 but I, I just use that as a day-to-day as a -day and, and regular spending money, where my uh, other one is really like in, for emergency funds, and I want to put the most there um, aside from the other funds that I'm, the areas I'm saving money in. In addition to my 401k, I have a rollover IRA from when my wife stopped working. 
Um, that value actually as of now is like over 34 grand. I started, my wife stopped working around five and a half, six years ago, and she had a 401k valued at around $17,000. I took that money and I rolled it into an IRA and I simply invested in Apple and Facebook. And last year it grew from 17 or 18 grand to around $32,000. Those two stocks alone, I think Apple did 91% um, return last year. Facebook did like 41%. It was insane. A bit of an anomaly. I don't think that's um, something I expect every year, but it was uh, amazing last year. And the other thing is, is I spend a little bit. I have, I have a little bit of money saved in a TD Ameritrade's account. I um, have around three grand in there. I simply invest in a couple of stocks, but um, this past uh, six, seven months, I um, invested in, in Snapchat and that thing grew from $9.99 to well over 17 bucks. So I'm um, doing pretty well there. I think my return so far is 27%. Um, and for the small money I have, it's, it's not a bad return. So with all that combined, I wanna see me save across all those buckets, at least $75,000 is the goal. Uh, next goal is I will execute a new savings strategy and savings plan for our new son to make sure that he has some money when he gets started in life. Um, last goal is I will uh, seek to realize new flows of income totaling between five and ten thousand dollars for the year. Um, as I said in the other goal, I want to find ways of supplementing my income in different areas as much as I can. Um, it's not realistic that I'm going to be able to find another full-time job um, because my current job alone is, is, en is enough for me. But um, I really want to grow the additional income I have on top of what I'm already making. And I really want to find how I could do that. So that's really how I want to hold myself accountable is just dive in, do some research and see what sticks. Okay, so that's my finances. And last one is public service and charity. I only have two goals here. But I do, I do find it very important that if you want to get something in your life, if you desire something in your life, you have to give. You can't always ask for things in life and, and not give it back. And I really believe in karma. I believe in putting good energy out there. I believe in helping people and um, even helping people when they don't think about or, or don't expect it. So I want to really do a better job this year uh, on this goal. And the two goals are as follows. I will research and then identify with charities. And from there, I would look to make an investment in 2020 of donations at a minimum of $1,000. Um, the next goal is I will volunteer my time. By the end of the year, I will volunteer my time for different causes, which will total at least 20 hours. Um, this, is, this kind of charity work can come in different forms. Uh, last year, I didn't do bad. I, I think on this one, I hit 16 to 17 hours. One thing I did, which I did a video on, is I um, volunteered for something called Meals on Wheels, where I go pick up um, pre-packaged and, and hot meals from a, uh, a local facility. I then drive them, physically drive them to people's front door. And I had a route where I did this for three or four different families a couple of, uh, on one day a week. And I, I hit those same families every week. So you got, to, you got to know them, they got to know your name. These are people who don't have much money or maybe they're handicapped and they can't uh, take care of themselves too well. Um, and it was really cool. It was a cool experience. It was very humbling. And um, that was one example. Another example is I did some work at my daughter's school. I, I, I took, took part in a fundraising basketball game where the, the fathers and some teachers played the Harlem Wizards, which is uh, something like the Harlem Globetrotters. Um, we suck. <laughs> I suck. I was YouTubing basketball the night before, but it was a really fun event. My daughter got a kick out of it, although she did get a little pissed at me because I didn't score one, one basket, and I'm a little embarrassed about that. But that's it, guys. These are my goals for 2020. Um, if you stuck with me through the end of the video, congratulations. I know this was a bit dry, to say the least, and very mundane. But to me, I find this very important because my vision is one day I'm gonna make it big in my life in the next few years. And when somebody looks online and they see who the hell is this guy? How did he start out? They're gonna see this kind of grit, this kind of grunt work, because these are the things, if you want something big in life, you have to make big, you have to put in big efforts and make big sacrifices. And these are the things I wanted to chronicle along the way. And uh, maybe it'll help people out. Um, and where I go from here is I will continue to read these goals a number of days a week. I will check in throughout the year and publish content of things I learn, messages I want to express, themes I want to talk about, things going on in my life. Um, and that's really it. So thank you so much, guys, for your attention. I wish you well. And until next time, have a great night.